Hi everyone, this is Ms. Leia and in this video, we're going to talk about image formation in mirrors, specifically the problem solving part. In this particular video, we're only going to talk about the relevant equations and the sign conventions. Now for the summary of equations, first we have the mirror equation which looks like this. It's 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i equals 1 over f. Now, D sub O stands for the distance of the object away from the surface of the mirror, and then D sub I refers to the distance between the image and the surface of the mirror. And then F or focal length, of course, is the distance between the focal point and the surface of the mirror. Next, we have the magnification equations, which can help us to determine whether the image is enlarged or minimized. First, we have n equals h sub i plus h sub o, where h sub i is the height of the image, and then h sub o is the height of the object, or object height. Okay? And then next, we have m equals negative d sub i over d sub o, so that's an alternative equation for magnification. And then next, we have something else. Where did this equation come from? It's pretty simple. Because magnification is equal both to this expression as well as this one, what we basically did here is we equated this one to this one. Because if these two expressions are both equal to magnification, therefore, we can equate these two expressions. So we have a single equation where they are all contained. It's actually useful for certain problems where one of those variables are is the required to find, and then the other variables are given. So we have to look at the given in the problem for us to know whether this would be applicable. And then for the sign conventions, first we have the object distance, which is positive if the object is placed in front or on the reflective side of the mirror. And you can see here that it's always positive, of course, because the object will always be placed in front of the mirror or on the reflective side of the mirror. Next, we have the image distance. It's usually the required to find any problem, and in a case where it appears as positive in the final answer, it means that the image is formed in front of the mirror and therefore is a real image. And then it appears as negative when the image is formed behind the mirror and is therefore a virtual image. Next, we have the image height or h sub i which comes out as positive if the image formed is erect or upright. And whenever it's negative, it means that the image is inverted or upside down. Now we also have the magnification, which has the same physical interpretation, interpretations as the image height in terms of sign. Because when magnification is positive, it means that the image is erect or upright. And whenever it's negative, it means that the image is inverted or upside down. And then next, we have the radius of curvature, or capital letter R, and it's positive whenever the radius of the imaginary sphere is on the reflective side of the mirror. Or, or in other terms, whenever you have a concave mirror, the radius of curvature is positive. Okay. Now, whenever it's negative, we use that sign, we, we make it negative whenever the radius of the imaginary sphere is behind the mirror, or in short, it's for convex mirror. Now, just to elaborate that further, what it's specifically saying for the concave part is like this. This one is a concave mirror, right? Because it bulges away from where you're supposed to place the object. Okay, now if you extend this concave mirror into a full sphere, the radius would actually be on this side. And this side, as we know, is the reflective side of the concave mirror. And whenever the radius of curvature is on the reflective side of the mirror, it has to be positive. That is why whenever you have a concave mirror, the radius of curvature that's given in the problem has to take a positive sign. Now at this point, I won't elaborate the negative sign because it's for convex mirrors and we have a separate video that specifically focuses on convex mirror and that's where I would emphasize that. But for now, just remember that for concave mirrors, the radius of curvature is positive. Okay, next I have here a specific thing I'd like you to be careful with because it can cause confusion among some students. Okay, 
So it says that the sine of m or magnification does not determine the size of the image, but it determines the orientation instead. Okay? There are actually quite a number of students who would sometimes think that whenever magnification is positive, the image is enlarged. And then whenever magnification is negative, they would think that the image is minimized. But the thing is, the sign of the magnification that comes out in a calculation has nothing to do with the size of the image. The negative sign indicates that the image is inverted or upside down, while when it's positive, the image is erect or upright. That's how we interpret the signs of the, or the sign rather, of the magnification. It has nothing to do with the size of the image. But the question is, how will the value of m tell us something about the size of the image? It's very simple. Whenever the absolute value of m is greater than 1, it means that the image is enlarged. But if magnification is less than 1, the absolute value, the image is minimized. Now, just to justify that further, it goes like this. So this is your magnification equation, right? Image height over object height. Now, suppose you have an object whose height is 10 centimeters. And then when you put it in front of a mirror, the image the image height that appears is 20 centimeters. If you perform the operation, which is 20 divided by 10, you're actually going to ha have positive 2, okay? And that value, the number itself, which is 2, it tells us that the image is twice the size of the object, right? It's that simple. And you can actually see in the given that the image, which is, which is 20 centimeters tall, is actually twice the size of the object, which is only 10 centimeters. And then next, whenever magnification comes out as 1, it means that the image is not is neither magnified nor minimized. Let's say, for example, the object that you place in front of the mirror is 10 centimeters, and then the image height is also still 10 centimeters. Of course, magnification will come out as 1. And once again, whenever magnification is greater than 1, the object is enlarged. And then if magnification is less than 1, the object is minimized. Let's say in this case, okay, if the object height, for example, is 10 centimeters and then the image formed is only 5 centimeters, obviously you can say from there that the image is in fact minimized and the magnification value will also tell you so because it will become 0.5 in this case. And whenever you have a magnification whose absolute value is less than 1, it simply means that the image is minimized or the image is smaller than the size of the actual object. So that is where these different conclusions are coming from. Okay, now in the next video, we're gonna solve a sample problem for concave mirrors. But at this point, I will give you the option to continue with the next video for the sample problem for concave mirror. Or if you feel like that has been a lot already, you have the option to take a break. But for this video, that's all. Have a great day.